Before particles, before atoms, there was only one thing, spinning light. In quantum information holography, everything we see from electrons to galaxies is made of quantum state vectors spinning like little light clocks. These are not metaphors, they're pure geometry. Each one encodes information as angular frequency, the rate at which the light spins. The faster the spin, the more energy it contains. In physics, this spin is called angular frequency, written in math as omega equals 2 pi divided by time. But in QIH, this is how mass emerges. Mass equals angular frequency because every particle is just a rhythm of light encoded on a qubit. Think of each atom as a spinning instrument. Hydrogen spins fast, heavier elements spin slower. But what we call an atom is actually a projection, like a holographic shadow of these spinning light clocks. When light clocks interfere with each other, they create interference patterns. Where they line up, we see peaks. Where they cancel, we see nothing. These patterns made of probabilities are the true shapes of orbitals. These aren't clouds of matter, they are clouds of possibility. In QIH, orbitals are just the integrated projection of angular frequency interference. That means what we see in space, the orbital, is the sum of all spinning vectors encoded in Hilbert space. This is a dual description of reality. In Hilbert space, the fundamental layer, everything is light spinning at different frequencies or derivatives. In our reality, what we see are the waveforms or the integrated projections rendered as orbitals. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. The derivative is the singularity or the spinning source. The integral is the holographic projection or the orbital we observe. One is the code, the other is the visible projection. The orbital shapes from standard quantum mechanics. The 1s2p, three day shells, are exactly what you get when you project spinning quantum vectors onto space using the rules of light interference. The equation that makes this happen is angular frequency equals mass times the speed of light squared divided by Planck's constant. Then that frequency interferes with itself and others and is projected through entangled qubits onto the holographic screen. This screen is called the event horizon in black hole physics. The singularity, the dense center of a black hole, is the region of pure superposition. All quantum states exist at once there, spinning at the speed of light. The event horizon is made of qubits entangled with the singularity. The singularity and event horizon are entangled mirrors. What the singularity does is reflected onto the horizon. You can't see into a black hole, but you can see its inverted image on the surface like watching a movie in a mirror. This is why every fundamental particle is a black hole in QIH. Each one is a spinning singularity, projecting its state onto the universe through entanglement. Information escapes through this entanglement. Energy equals Planck's constant times angular frequency. And since mass equals energy divided by the speed of light squared, mass itself is just trapped angular frequency, released through projection. Even nuclear magnetic resonance, the technique used to scan the body and image tissues, is just a special case. It's a direct measurement of the angular frequency of a spinning light clock, an atom seen through the projection. One example is the hydrogen atom. When measured in an NMR, it spins at exactly 63.86 MHz. In QAH, we predict that number from first principles. Using mass, light speed and spin geometry, no fitting required, and it matches the real-world measurements exactly. Not just for hydrogen, but also for helium, lithium, carbon, oxygen and all elements in the periodic table. QIH predicts their orbital shapes and their nuclear magnetic resonant frequencies perfectly.